on today's episode, the end of the manual transmission. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Now, people around here that know me know that I have a somewhat unusual taste for the cars that I drive every day. Some people race the speedometer, the dynamometer guys race the tachometer, and the hypermilers, well, they race the gas gauge, but I like to race the odometer. Durability and mass production consumer goods, well, those things are interesting to me, and the difference between modern automobiles, the ones that I recall as a kid, is a little discussed, and it's dramatic. 100,000 miles is considered a realistic life expectancy for an automobile when I learned to drive, but I drove to the studio today in a 2008 Honda Element with over 200,000 miles on the clock with the original engine and transmission, and it still runs well. How far will it go? Well, I intend to find out, but to determine when that last mile comes, I still have to do regular maintenance and deal with consumables. Now, my element is a little rare in that it has a manual transmission, and like brake pads, clutch plates are a consumable item. Now, occasionally, the clutch release bearing, which actuates the system, gets consumed as well, and mine decided to grenade in the most spectacular way inside the bell housing, taking out most everything inside. Now, I do this kind of work myself as a hobby and also to examine the way that these vehicles are designed and assembled. Like most modern front-wheel drive vehicles, removing and replacing the transmission in my element would turn any God-fearing man into an atheist. But on completion, it occurred to me that this will likely be the last clutch that I ever replace. Not because I intend to leave this earth anytime soon, but because the manual transmission is disappearing. The automatic transmission has been around in one form or another since about 1940, and up until the 1960s, it was a luxury, an extra cost option. People that bought them paid for the convenience of two-pedal driving with weight, complexity, cost, and something like 5% of engine power lost by way of the torque converter. Automatic transmissions made vehicles slower and less fuel efficient. Now, all this changed with computer control, solenoid-actuated hydraulics, and the lockup torque converter. Today, it's possible to have the best of both worlds, manual shifting on demand and effortless driving and stop-and-go traffic. But the complexity is still there, as is the weight. Now, purists like myself still like the engagement with the machine, the tactile feel of synchronizers, and the bite of the clutch disc under hand and foot. But it's very likely that this element may be the last daily driver I own with a manual transmission. The few vehicles that are still available with them are sports cars and big class three and four trucks. Now, my previous daily driver, a 97 short box F-150, was also a stick, and I did try to replace it with a similar vehicle, but the local Ford dealer informed me that manual transmissions were long gone in half tons. If I expect to use both feet and both hands to operate my next daily driver, my options would appear to be limited to things like the Mazda Miata or the Porsche 911, neither of which is likely to oil down my driveway anytime soon. Now, it's a shame that a new generation of drivers will never experience the tactile sensation of mechanical components engaging and disengaging. I think every mechanical engineer should drive a car with a manual transmission, but most young engineers that I've met have never done so. Now, if you can find a car with a stick, buy it or at least drive it once. You will never forget it. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.